Hello. Okay, it's time. It is time to start talking about and writing some code. What's going on here? It, you can see already that there's this function setup, function draw. Ugh, what is that stuff? There's curly brackets, there's parentheses. Let's hold off on that for a second. Let's not get too worked up about that. Let's focus just for a moment on create canvas, parentheses, 400 comma 400, close parentheses, semicolon. I'm gonna write that out in a generic way. I'm gonna say something like instruction, another word for that might be command. And the truth of the matter is the actual technical name for what I'm writing here is a function name. Function name. Instruction, parentheses, some number, comma, some other number, I don't know, comma, some other number, comma, dot, dot, dot. Well, let's not put that there. Uh, close parentheses, semicolon. This is the syntax for executing an instruction for the computer to follow. The name of the instruction, parentheses that open and close, followed by a semicolon, and some number of things in between. That number of things could be zero, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four. It depends. Ah! So now, if we go back to create canvas, we can see, look, the instruction is create canvas, parentheses, 400 comma 400. So ask yourself, pause the video for a second, what does 400 mean and what does 400 mean? I mean, it means the number 400, but like, why is it the number 400 what is it doing? Okay, are you back? Did you think about it? Well, one way to try to figure this out is for me just to say, well, why don't we just change the number to 200? And nothing changed. Why didn't it change? Because it ran the program already. I have to tell it to rerun the program. Oh, it's half as wide, but just as tall. Hmm. By the way, there's this interesting button over here, auto refresh. Huh. So notice how I changed the code and then I had to run it again. That was a little bit inconvenient. I mean, there's, it's not so bad. I, I'm happy to do it as often as I need to, but things might be a little more convenient if I select that. Because now what if I change this to 300, whoops, 300, change this to 400, why don't I change this to 800? It's always going to update the drawing, the result of the instructions here if I have that auto refresh clicked. And I'm gonna go back to 400 and 400. So what those numbers define is the width and height of this thing called the canvas. This is the drawing canvas. It's the thing that we're going to write instructions to draw stuff into, move things around, interact with things all eventually. And the syntax for making this is create canvas 400, 400. In interestingly, what happens if I delete this? Woo. So P5, by the way, will always put a canvas there for you. If you forget to say create canvas, it made a canvas there for you, but um, it just didn't know how big to make it, so it picked some arbitrary size, probably 100 by 100. But let's put that back. There's 400 by 400. Ah, oh, there's a really important thing that I want to talk about. But let's come back over here. So create canvas. This is the function name. Let's use the real terminology. You can think of it like a command. Create canvas. That's your command. These are called the arguments. I think earlier, I didn't actually say this, but if you were giving me instructions to do some exercises and you said, do some jumping jacks, I would say, how many? You need to modify, you need to provide parameters for how I should execute the instruction. The instruction is create the canvas with a size of 400 by 300 pixels, meaning create an area on the screen that I can draw to that's 400 pixels wide, 300 pixels high. If the concept of pixels is new to you, on a computer screen, every single color that you see is, if you zoom way into it, is a single dot. Now there's all sorts of weird, funny business going on because we have all these high density displays now that have multiple pixels for every pixel. But all that aside, the idea here is if I were to zoom way in, way, 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 way in, and count all the dots, there'd be 400 of them. 
and there's 400 wide and let's change this to 300 just so we can see that it's a little bit different. 400 by 300. So this is the idea. Now, we have to ask a really important question. I've totally forgotten to bring this up. What is the difference between JavaScript? We haven't even really gotten to the drawing stuff yet, but don't worry, we will. JavaScript and P5. Is Create Canvas P5 or is it JavaScript? Is 400 comma 300 P5 or is it JavaScript? This is not an easy question to answer and it's a question that I hope will resolve itself for you over time as you program more and more and learn about other libraries besides P5 that work with the JavaScript language. But the key thing is here, the language, the syntax, the fact that, that you need parentheses and commas and semicolons and names of functions go here, that is the JavaScript language. To call a function in JavaScript is to write the function name followed by parentheses with commas for the arguments and a semicolon. That's JavaScript. Create Canvas is a function that exists that is defined inside of the P5 library. So if you did not have P5, if you weren't using the P5 web editor, you were in some other environment and you wrote Create Canvas, you might get an error message saying, I don't know what Create Canvas is. All programming environments and editors allow you to import other libraries but the P5 web editor has done this for you. So the fact that we can execute P5 commands, write Create Canvas, and there's a lot more of them, means is because we're using the P5 library. The way we execute that command, where the semicolon goes, where the parentheses go, where the commas go, that is all the JavaScript language itself, the syntax. I hope that gives a little bit of clarity. There's more to it than that. You'll have many more questions, but um, Hopefully, the, 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 I'll keep answering that as we go. All right, so now, where can I find out about other commands that I can write besides create canvas? And when I say commands, I really mean functions, but I, I like to use the word command at least at the beginning because it's, it's a little clearer to talk about what it is we're actually doing here, you and me. But um, technically, these are functions that we're calling. All right, so the answer to that question is the P5.js website. If I go to the P5.js website and I click on this, ta this, this link called reference, this link on reference has every single function that's part of the P5 library. So somewhere on here I could do a find, we can find Create Canvas. And I could click on Create Canvas and learn more about Create Canvas. This is known as the documentation. Programming languages and programming libraries and frameworks all they should at least have documentation where you go to read about how the thing is supposed to work. I could sit here, I could make like thousands and thousands of videos and just go through every one of one of these and explain it to you. But learning to program is not just learning how to write the instructions and the syntax, it's learning how to read documentation. So the functions that I want you, if you're watching this video series, which I guess you are, to follow first are the ones that are under 2D primitives. This is where we're going to start. There are lots of functions and go and explore them all, don't listen to me, but for your first exercise after you watch this video, just limit yourself to triangle, rect, which is short for rectangle, quad, which is any shape that has four vertices to it, four sides, edges, point, which is a single point, line, which is a line, ellipse, which is eh, a fancy name for circle, but it could be sort of squashed, or um, an arc. So all of these, arc probably needs its own video to talk about how arc works. Ah! So, but you can explore these and experiment with them. Let's start with, let's just make a guess. Let's start with rect for rectangle. And I, let's not even click on it yet. I'm just gonna go over here. And now the drawing, now I need to talk about what setup and draw are. What are these blocks of code? Why do they start with a curly bracket and end a bracket? I'm gonna come back to that. For right now, we should understand that setup is the place where create canvas goes. At the beginning, we're gonna set up our canvas. Draw is the place where I'm gonna put my stuff to draw stuff to the canvas. There's more to it than that, but that's the way to think about it right now. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to say, R, and I'm gonna zoom back out, R-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. Um, I'm going to put some numbers in there. Shout them out, you're not, I can't hear you, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna say like 100, 
50, 25, nothing's there yet. 75, 785, 75. Ah, look at that. Suddenly there's a rectangle there. So even just through guessing, right, we know the name of the instruction, rectangle, rect, R-E-C-T. We know that we need to then put maybe some numbers in between parentheses and then end with a semicolon. And we could just try, I mean, weirdly, like, well, could I put another number there? Whoops, uh, I messed up. Could I put another number there? Oh yeah, oh, look at that. What did that do? So what, are, ha, ha, what's going on? So you know what, I'm gonna actually take the time to explain the rectangle function to you. Then we're gonna look at the reference page and then I don't need to do really the other ones because you can then do this for yourself. You can type the command in, you can type the numbers in, you can sort of play around and guess, you can read the reference page and try to fix it. Then you can ask me questions in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to respond to you. Okay, so I need to give myself a little space here. And what I want to do is draw the canvas for you. Then what I want to do is write out this function rect. And I'm going to say 100. What did I, what did I put actually in here? I put 100, 50, 25, 75. 100, 50, 25, 75. So how do these arguments define the way to draw a rectangle, right? R-E-C-T means draw a rectangle. Here are the properties of the rectangle that I want to see. In order to understand what these numbers mean, we need a little bit of background knowledge about this two-dimensional space itself of the canvas. We need to think about something called a Cartesian coordinate system. So a Cartesian coordinate system, named for the French mathematician René Descartes, <laughs> Cartesian, is a way of describing a two-dimensional space and saying like this spot can be identified by this quote-unquote XY position or this horizontal and vertical position. You, if you've taken some type of math or geometry class, depending on where you are in your sort of learning the world journey, you might have seen a graph that looks like this with some ticks on it, up and down, and you might have learned like, oh, this is something called the x-axis, and this is something called the y-axis, and if I say, here's a point three comma four, I go, this is, and this is somehow the point zero zero, the origin, the center, three comma four would be one, two, three, go up, up, and then one, two, three, four, refers to this position right here, within the Cartesian coordinate system. A 2D canvas being drawn by P5 is also a Cartesian coordinate system, but it's a little bit confusing because this default, the standard way a coordinate system in when pixels and computer graphics is defined does not look exactly like this. The equivalent of this zero, zero being the origin is actually up here at the top left. And this is the x-axis, horizontal, this is the y-axis. So if I were to say three comma four and try to find that pixel, I would have to go one, two, three pixels over and one, two, three, four pixels down. Three comma four would be this pixel right here. The truth of the matter is the pixels are really, really tiny. Right? This is very similar to a piece of graph paper and that might be a way of kind of like playing, you know, you could stop and go get a piece of graph paper and try to like, you know, draw a big canvas on it and try to position where things are. That's the idea of what we're doing here. The, the pixels are really tiny, so in many ways, so, so, so you have to more imagine like this is zero, this is pixel zero, and the width is 400, and this is gonna, this is gonna make you a little bit crazy. The last pixel is actually pixel 399. Oh, that's so weird. Think about that though. I, I, I'm a little bit off on a tangent here that's not, but it's, it's kind of, it comes up again and again. Let's say it's five pixels wide. There are five pixels, but the first pixel is zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. Ah! Five fingers, but I only got up to four. So I, this is like foreshadowing. This is gonna come up again and again. Counting from zero is a thing that we do a lot in programming, which is a little bit different. Because normally I wanna say one, two, three, four, five, but uh, there are five things, but there's zero, one, two, three, four. All right, so pixel zero, pixel 399. So what does this mean, 150? This is the X location of the rectangle, and 50 is the Y location of the rectangle. So let's just guess, maybe one, pixel 100 is about over here. 
Uh, pixel 50 is about over here. So that's this pixel here. That's 150. This is the width of the rectangle. And this is the height of the rectangle. 20, man, I mean, that's about 25 pixels. Maybe that's about 75 pixels. So that is how we define the rectangle. The first two arguments are the xy of the top left. The third argument is the width. And the last argument there is the height. And there we see the rectangle. Ah, I clearly didn't draw this perfectly, but if we come back here, we can see that's exactly what you see right here. And I could start changing these numbers around. And I could say 150, and I could say 75, and I can move it over to 175, and it's going to be over there, and I can move it up to zero, and it's going to be there. So you can see, this is what you can play around with now, changing those numbers. I got I to gotta get something off my chest. What we're doing here seems kind of like, this is what programming is? Are you crazy? It would be so much easier for me to do this in insert, you know, commercial software that makes images or drawings here. <laughs> that I don't want to buzz market for free. <laughs> I'm waiting for some, no, no. Anyway, um, that, the answer is true. This is only just the way I want to start. The whole point of programming is to write algorithms and instructions for saying things like spin around, move up and down, bounce off the edge. Um, how could I turn this into a, the game Pong where that's actually the paddle that moves up and down? We're gonna get, I'm going to get there. But, so this is a little bit of like not really how programming works but it's a good place to get started and feel comfortable. And so basically, you know, what, I'm, what your assignment is, if you choose to accept this assignment, is to make your own drawing. Make your own drawing. Maybe make a, a drawing of somebody, uh, a friend of yours or, or someone in your family, a little portrait of them or a self-portrait, or do something abstract or draw a landscape or um, something that, you know, so I, can, I, I won't be on it. So just try to make, now, make, make a drawing. And how are you going to, all I did was show you a rectangle. I've been like talking for like two and a half hours. I only got was this rectangle on the screen. So how are you going to do more than that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you to it a little bit. But, but, and let me show you how to, how to, how to get, get, get further. I'm going to go to the P5 reference and I'm going to click on the rectangle function. Right? This is where I am, remember, p5js.org slash reference. I'm going to click on the rectangle function. And we're going to see, first we're going to see, here's a nice little example. So this, at the very least, I could just take this and copy it. Oh, shoot, I have to go back here. I'm, I could copy it into my code. And we could see, okay, that's what the, does that look the same as what's here? Yeah, kind of. This is a smaller canvas, but it's the right idea. Oh, look, this, oh, there's like another argument and it's round and there's all the others. So, this is what you can explore, but the point here is that what I want to look at is this is what's really important. This is known as documentation. This is saying this is the name of the function and these are the arguments. X, Y, W, H. These are other arguments. The reason they're why they're in these square brackets is they're optional. So you, you have to use an X, Y width and height. You can optionally add more arguments. And here it's going to tell you what they are. X is the X coordinate of the rectangle. That's exactly what I explained to you over here. Y is the Y coordinate. W is the width. H is the height. And then there's these other optional ones for rounding the edges. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not worry about that too much. Rectangle was maybe not the best one to start with because of extra added complication. But I could easily just go over and now click on, say, line. And I could see, oh, look at this. This is what it looks like. The function name is line. It takes four arguments. This is what I get. What are those arguments? x1, y1, x2, y2. x is the x coordinate of the first point. Y, y is, y1 is the y coordinate of the first point. Oh yeah, a line is a thing that connects two points. Look at that. I've connected two points with a line. So now, I can come back here and, by the way, oh my god, Z, I could get into 3D. Let's not get into 3D right now. We'll save that for another time. Uh, ah. So I'm going to go back to the editor and I'm going to say something like line 0, 0, 400, 400. There we go. Look at that. There's a line. Oh, and maybe I want it to be 400, 300 because I wanted to go to the other side or I want it to actually be like 0, 50. There's the line, right? You can see now that line is appearing. It is a line that connects two points, 0, 50 and 400, 300. Now, okay. Something is really bothering me about the code. Don't be like me. <laughs> Don't be.
be, be, be much more forgiving and relaxed about the world. But I, I cannot tolerate the fact that this line of code right here is starting over here, and this one is starting a little bit over here. Code in, I'm, I'm kind of joking around, and look, there's a space here, but there's like no space after this comma. One thing that, you'll, that is important to note is this is going to work no matter what. If, you, if your code doesn't line up or you put a lot of spaces in or a few spaces in, these types of things, white space meaning space and return and tabs and all those sorts of things do not affect the way the code runs, but they do kind of make the code a little less readable. And P5 has a really nice feature under edit tidy code, which you can also do shift tab, which will kind of fix the indentation in white space for you. So I'm gonna press shift tab right now. <gasps> oh, and everything is all lined up. So I encourage you to use shift tab, you know, save after you've done that. Uh, I didn't mention, by the way, that you can see when it's last been saved right up here. It says just now. That'll change into like a minute later. And it also has auto save, which you can, uh, uh, adjust here in the settings, autosave on and off. That's sort of an important little feature just to quickly mention. Um, all right, so we're almost, I'm almost ready to finish this video. One thing I, I, one thing I gotta tell you, so first of all, uh, why is the background pink and why is the rectangle white and the line is black? Well, I haven't talked about color at all. So that's the topic of the next video. We, these are arguments that define the dimensions and the location of shapes but those arguments don't seem to define the color. So we're gonna have to look at how do we define color. The clue to that is somewhere in here, right? Background, the function must be setting the background color. So that's coming, play around with that on your own if you want, but that's what I'll talk about in the next video. The other thing is, look at this, the line looks like it's going over this rectangle. What happens if I take this line of code, I'm gonna use Command X for cut and Command V for paste. Now look at this, zoom on in, the line, is behind the rectangle. So layering, the layering of the shapes, what appears on top or behind, has to do with the order of these lines of code. The order that the code happens is, is very important to how a program runs. Not so important right now, just drawing some shapes, playing around, experimenting, but this is a crucial concept that will come up especially once I, we want to animate this stuff. So that's, that's, I'm, that's going to come. How does this square move around? How can I interact with it with the mouse? And the order is going to become even more important then. Okay, so here's your assignment. Make your own picture. Use only, don't listen to me and use whatever you want, but if you want a constraint, use only what's here under 2D primitives. Um, and um, yeah, and maybe not arc or the play with arc. And I'll have to make a video about arc or something. And mm, let me, can I show you one more thing? Do I want to show you one more thing? I think something that'd be really useful. So I, I got to show you one more thing. Where is this one? Where, uh, okay, attributes. These are some other functions that you might be interested in exploring. And I'm going to come back to stroke weight for sure. Some of these as we talk, talk about color. But at least one rect mode and ellipse mode are kind of important. So I'm going to just show you something about uh, rect mode, which is that, remember how I said that this xy defines the top left location of the rectangle? Sometimes it's much more convenient to draw where a square rectangle is by setting the center of it. And so that can also be done. Let me show you what I mean by that. For example, the center of this canvas, right? What's the center of the canvas? If it's 400 wide and 300 high, the center is 200 by 150, right? So I'm gonna put this rectangle at 200, 150. And then I'm gonna make it 150 wide and 150 high. Huh, that's weird. Oh, it's not in the center. Oh, but the top left is in the center. But what if I want the rectangle itself to be centered? Well, I could figure out the math for that. I'd go, okay, so then it's like 125 maybe. It's like that's shifting it over. But I can use an attribute, sorry. And the attribute rect mode is another function I can type center in here. This is an instruction, a function, to set the mode of drawing a rectangle to center, which means, now look at it, there it is in the center, okay? So that was another important, so maybe in your exercise, you might wanna use 
rec mode and ellipse mode as well. We could click on this and we could see, look, there's corner, there's corners, there's radius, there's center. So there's a few other ways of defining how a rectangle is, but I think for the most part, you're just gonna want the default way, which is corner, or center, which is center. Okay, you know, when I said I was gonna do these videos, I sort of imagined doing a whole bunch of like two or three minute ones, <laughs> so I've completely failed at this. This is, became kind of a long one about drawing, but hopefully you got the basic idea, uh, and I look forward to seeing what you make. You can share links to the P5 sketches you create after watching this video in the comments. So I'll click on them and look at them, and that'll be exciting, okay? Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video where I'll talk about color.